Welcome to Lecture Online. Here's another interesting example of a bridge structure. It's a little bit different from what you normally would see. Again, what we're trying to do here is find the forces on the members and what we're going to do in the next video, do it again, but then using the method of sections. What we'll do here is start with this joint right here. Notice that on this bridge structure, we have a single load at the middle of 10,000 newtons. Since this is totally symmetric, we can then assume that there will be a support force on either side of 5,000 newtons. Also notice that the length of the bridge is 50 meters, so each of these four sections here would be equal to 12 and a half meters, so everything is symmetric. Also notice the angle is 30 degrees, which allowed me to find the height of the bridge, which would be equal to the tangent of theta equal to h over 12.5, so h is equal to 7.2169 meters. I just kept a few extra significant figures so I don't have any round off errors when I start using that number. First what we're going to do is look at this joint right here. Let's call that joint one and we're going to add the three forces that act on this joint. We have the support force, we have the force over here, and we have the force over here. Which, in other words, we have the force FCD and the force FDE. Now notice, we can determine if these are compression or tension forces. Notice that if, if uh, this member was not connected and this force was acting straight up, this would cause this beam to rotate in this direction, but it wouldn't have enough distance to do that, so this beam then becomes under compression. So we'll just put a little C there with a circle, so this beam is under compression. And if this this beam here was not attached over here and this began to rotate, this would pull free from this attachment and that means that this beam here is under tension. So put a T here like that. Okay, knowing that, let's add those three forces up for joint number one. Joint number one, we have one force going this direction. This is the 5,000 Newtons. We have a force of compression, which means it pushes in this direction and the force pushes in this direction. That at this joint here, we can see that that force will come down in this direction. This would be force CD. And then since this beam is under tension, this beam would then be pulling in this direction from that joint. So we have a force, let me make a triangle here, a force in this direction. This is force DE. Notice this is still the 30 degree angle, and then based upon this right triangle right here, we can determine the size of these other two forces, FCD and FDE. Since FCD is the hypotenuse, and this is the opposite side to the angle, we can say that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. In this case, the opposite side would be 5,000, and the hypotenuse would be FCD which means that FCD is equal to 5,000, and of course these are newtons, 5,000 newtons, divided by the sine of 30 degrees, which is one half, which means FCD is equal to 10,000 newtons. And it's a force of compression. And finally, we can find force DE. This is the adjacent side, which means we can use the tangent here. We can say that the uh, let me write it, I'll need this room right here, let me go over here. So we can say that FDE can be related to the tangent, that's opposite side over the adjacent side, or since we already know the hypotenuse, eh, well, let's do this, FDE is equal to the hypotenuse, which is FCD, times the cosine of 30 degrees, so FDE is equal to the 10,000 newtons that we just found, multiply times 0 0.866. In other words, FDE must therefore equal 8,660 newtons. All right, using the first triangle, we're now able to find the magnitude of the force on this beam and the magnitude of force on this beam. Now let's go to this joint right here. Let's call this joint number two, and we're going to add up all the forces there. But what I'm only going to do is, since I already know FDE, and there's perfect symmetry here, and I know that this is force AE, force AE, force AE must be exactly equal to force DE, so I know what those two components are, or those two forces. Let's just look at only in the forces in the Y direction on this joint, joint number two, the way we labeled it here. 
So in joint number two, we have these two forces now. Since this is pulling downward, these two forces must be pulling upward, which means that these two beams must be under tension. Tension and tension right there. Which means if we're going to sum up, sum up the forces in the y direction, and they must add up to zero, we'll end up with something like this, where we have a 10,000 newton force in this direction, 10,000 newtons, and then we have the two forces in this direction, one force this way, one force this way. Note that this is a 30 degree angle, and this here is also a 30 degree angle, which means that the vertical components would be equal to these two forces. Let's call this uh, force CE and force BE. So this is force CE, and this is force BE. And then if we just take the vertical components only, Notice that this is FCE times the sine of 30, this is FBE times the sine of 30 as well. So now we can sum those up together. We can say that the sum of the forces is equal to, let me get rid of this here, FCE, the minus 10,000 newtons, force going this way, plus, there's two of them, so it would be two times FCE, because they're perfectly symmetric, FCE, multiply times the sine of 30 degrees. Since the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half, 1 half times 2 is equal to FCE. In other words, 0 is equal to minus 10,000 newtons plus FCE, which means that FCE, which must be equal in magnitude to FBE, FBE, and that is equal to 10,000 newtons. So now we have FCD, we have FDE, FAE, we have FBE, and we have FCE. That means we have all the forces and all the members, there's one left. I don't know yet what the force is on force BC. Well, since this is a force under tension, we know that this is pulling in this direction, this is pushing in this direction, or pulling in that direction, I should say. Let's take a look at this joint right here. Let's call that joint number three. We know two of the forces now. We know this force, this force. We do not know that force right there. But again, we can use the sum of the force in the x direction, see what we get. So on joint number three, we're going to use the sum of the forces in the x direction. Must add up to zero. And notice what we have there. We have this force going this direction, this force in this direction. Now since this force is pulling this way, this force is pulling this way, there must be a force pushing back in the opposite direction, which means that this beam must be under compression, which means that it's pushing in the opposite direction. So we have a balancing force in this direction. We call that force FBC. Also notice that this force here is FCD, and that is equal to 10,000 newtons. And we have this force right here, force of tension, FCE, and that is also equal to, I believe, yes, 10,000 newtons. Notice that relative to the horizontal, this is a 30 degree angle, and this must be a 30 degree angle as well. These are alternate interior angles, so this must be 30 degrees as well. Now we can go ahead and solve that for the sum of the force in the x direction. We can say that 0 is equal to FBC, which is the unknown. That's a positive force minus FCD and FC. Since they're symmetric, we can say that this could be 2FCD multiplied times the cosine of 30 degrees. Remember what I just did, since I know that FCE is equal to magnitude to FCD, they have the same relative angle to the horizontal. We could simply say twice the force of either one of these two times the cosine of 30 degrees, which gives me the X component. So this would be FCD times the cosine of 30 degrees. This one here would be FCE times the cosine of 30 degrees. Since they're the same in magnitude, I can simply say twice one of them times the cosine of 30 degrees balanced out by FBC, which means that FBC is equal to, when I move that to the other side, it becomes positive, turn the equation around, two times FCD 
times the cosine of 30 degrees, which is equal to 2 times FCD is, where am I, FCD? Ah, here we go. I lost my FCD. All right, that's 10,000 newtons times 0 0.866. So twice that, that would be uh, 1732. So that would be FBC is equal to 17,312 newtons. Did I do that right? 20 newtons. Ah, 20 newtons, because this is twice that, right? 16, 17, yes, that's it. 17,320 newtons for FBC. And so that allowed me to find all the forces on all the members. In addition to that, I was able to determine which members were under compression and which members were under tension. And that's how we do it, simply by looking at each joint and simply summing up the forces either in the X direction or the Y direction or both, or by drawing a triangle like this relating the forces to the physical dimensions of the bridge or of the section there related to that particular joint. And that's how we do it, straightforward, one member at a time. On the next video, we'll do the exact same bridge structure, but then we'll do it using the method of sections to see how we can find the forces on the individual, individual members. And that's how it's done.